Hi, I'm Dr. Cathy Hart. I'm a GP at Affinity Care. Now, with the easing of lockdown and with the letter from NHS England last week, we know that you've got lots of questions and we thought that we could do a video to answer some of them. Firstly, when are you going to open up again? Well, we've never been closed. When the first lockdown was announced, we had to drastically change the way we could manage patients in a really short time. We moved to a telephone triage system as advised by NHS England, and we reviewed all patients over the phone to determine how to manage them. Within two weeks of that initial lockdown, we were again seeing those patients we felt clinically needed to be seen. Initially, this was at two sites, so patients did sometimes have to travel. However, we needed to ensure that those patients were seen safely and ensure the risk of catching or spreading COVID was as low as possible. However, as the number of patient appointments have increased, we have been able to increase how many patients we have seen face to face in a safe way. Slowly, we've also been able to open up more and more sites for face to face appointments. Why is it so hard to get a GP appointment? Well, despite and in spite of the pandemic, patient needs keep going up. In March this year, 2021, the demand for GP appointments across the UK was 20% higher than in 2019, but with fewer GPs, far fewer GPs to deal with them. Practices in England are delivering more than 1 million appointments each day, and we've also been providing an ongoing COVID vaccination programme. A lot of the consultations we are getting are regarding other problems, for example, chasing hospital appointments and letters, things that as GPs we have no control over or input into. We are trying really hard to work our way through an ever-increasing admin workload of clinic letters. And although we work well with our secondary care colleagues, and we are so grateful for everything they have done through the pandemic and before and after, we are still getting an increasing amount of inappropriate requests from secondary care to complete the work that we are not contracted for and we do not have the funding, resources or capacity to do. For example, blood tests, examinations and chasing of results requested elsewhere. But saying that, despite that, if you, on the day, feel that your condition is a medical emergency, we will always speak to you that same day. One of the questions we've had is, what about nurses' appointments and where can I get my ears syringed? We'd had advice from different specialities such as CCG, Nurse NHS England, Royal College of GPs. And on the basis of that, we developed a RAG rating system for all our nursing appointments. Anything that we deemed um, low priority was delayed or changed. For example, we got hematology advice around B12 injections. We looked at all the patients and medical indications for injections and worked out how we could support yourselves if you were one of these patients by giving oral treatment instead. Services like ear syringing were deemed to be non-essential in the early stages of lockdown and not just by us but by the whole of the Bradford CCG. As things have changed with the easing of lockdown we are reviewing all our services again and um, this will be under a continual review and we will look to see what we can further offer. One of the questions we had was, what about patients who, who don't have phones or are deaf? We have a policy within Affinity Care to support the best management of our people. And those hard of hearing, including face-to-face -face appointments or using video interpreters, has been accessed where appropriate. For those patients who, have, who either don't have phones or have had cognitive problems with an inability to be able to do a telephone triage or a video consult, we've always offered an alternative way to manage them, including face-to-face -face appointments since the early days of lockdown. This has also allowed our carers to attend the appointments with these, with these vulnerable groups. This has continually been reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. The letter from the NHS said that I can ask for a face-to-face -face appointment. When can I see a GP? Well, the letter that came out last week from the Medical Director for Primary Care and the Director of Primary Care said that we should respect preferences for face-to-face -face care unless there are good clinical reasons to the contrary. Now, currently, we still have a lot of patients unvaccinated. There is a growing concern about different variants and growing numbers of the Indian variant in Bradford and Calderdale. We still have a lot of vulnerable patients. 
Our practices have limited space and reception and in the clinical rooms, so our current standard operating procedure will continue until we deem that we can offer more appointments in a safe way. This means that nurses and healthcare assistants will still see patients if it is clinically necessary to see them. GPs and advanced nurse practitioners will still be assessing all patients by telephone triage and then determining if it is clinically essential to see them in person. We have proven in the last 14 months that we can do a lot of diagnoses and management either via the information given in an e-consultation, over the phone, via video consultation or via photograph. If we've determined that we can't get that information that we need via these methods, we've been asking the patient to see us face to face. This system has not only kept our staff safe, but also our most vulnerable patients. We know that patients want to see a GP face to face and as clinicians, we really want that too. But we have to determine if we can manage that patient in any other way. As COVID becomes less of a threat, we will be increasing the number of face to face appointments. As you'll be aware, the letter from NHS England states that all GP receptions should be open. We have tried to maintain this in most of our practices where possible, with social distancing and safe practice for all our staff and our patients, ensuring that we've arranged reception space so that we can do this. We know that COVID transmission is a lot higher on the indoor spaces with very poor ventilation. Our buildings simply do not all have ventilation that allows for just anyone or everyone to sit in our reception. With COVID safe risk assessments, we have continued to reevaluate our reception areas about the maximum status space that we can offer for people waiting. This will be continually reviewed and we hope to have a more open door approach. One of the questions we've had is, my mum's housebound and what happens to her? As many of you will be aware, Affinity Care covers across two localities, the north and the southwest of Bradford. The north locality has already got a very dedicated home visiting team and has had this for some time. This has continued to be supported throughout the COVID pandemic. During the COVID pandemic, Dr Lyles and Caroline Hill, one of our fabulous advanced nurse practitioners, has set up a dedicated home visiting team in the southwest locality. They developed their team to include healthcare assistants and trainee advanced nurse practitioners. This is working really, really well. And it means that our housebound patients are being looked after in a very safe manner, whilst the rest of our clinicians can focus on other patients. During the pandemic, we know that many people have become temporarily housebound and her home visiting team has been continuing to support and look after those patients as long as needed. And we will continually review this within the COVID safe measures. I rang for a GP appointment, but was told to go see the pharmacy. Why am I being fobbed off? Well, our reception staff are now trained to care navigate. This was an incredibly important part of the pandemic. This means that they may direct you to another avenue of care. For example, self-care, local pharmacists, opticians or online resources. We're sorry if this feels like you are being fobbed off, but realistically, these other avenues are there to protect our NHS. We simply do not have enough appointments to deal with your waxy ears or your sticky eyes. We know that most viral illnesses settle within 10 days. We know that most acute sprains are better within six to eight weeks. It's important that as patients, you can self-care and you have patience when your body is healing. If it isn't a self-limiting illness, then the GP may well be the most appropriate place to contact. But for all those things that will sort themselves out with time, please use the other resources available to you. Our website and the NHS website have an enormous wealth of information about most self-limiting illnesses. So please look here before you pick up the phone to us. Why I haven't had an annual review. We looked at all the patient records and reviewed if they had stable blood pressures, whether people were up to date with their ECGs and if they'd had been seen in the previous 12 months. We then looked to prioritise our patients for those that needed to be seen, such as those patients that had, had unstable bloods, and we arranged a review for those. We also prioritised certain reviews for our vulnerable cohort of patients, including our patients with learning disabilities and severe mental illness. However, a lot of these were done over the phone via telephone consults and video consults where applicable and clinically appropriate. 
This is all changing now, so we are doing much more and we are looking to do more annual reviews. We still have a long list of patients to get through, so please be patient with us. In the meantime, if you have any symptoms or things change or you are concerned about your health, please do let us know and we can look to potentially review you sooner. I'm sure you have many, many more questions than these, but I hope we've managed to answer some of the important ones. We will continue to keep you up to date with any changes as they happen. We have been incredibly grateful for all the lovely messages of support that we have had from lots of our patients, but we've also had a lot of complaints and negativity. We appreciate that everyone is tired, angry and frustrated about this pandemic. But please remember that we have never closed through the whole pandemic, that we are facing higher demands for appointments, but we only want what is safe for our patients and staff. Please remember that we are humans doing our best, but we are also tired, angry and frustrated. But we keep on serving you, our patients, to the best of our abilities. Please be patient with us a while longer as we continue to adapt to this changing landscape. Thank you.